In this video, I break down my top five Fitbits you should buy for 2023, including the price and features, and stay to the end of the video as I let you know exactly which one I recommend. And surprisingly, it's not this one. Welcome back team, I'm Steve, qualified personal trainer from Stag Fitness. We'll start with the lowest price Fitbit first, then we can work our way up from there. First of all, we have the Fitbit Inspire 2 and 3. I've still included the Inspire 2 as it's still available to buy on the Fitbit website. And it retails for $49.99 in the UK and the US. With the new Inspire 3, retailing for $84.95. Now these are great fitness trackers with an impressive 10 day battery life and we'll track all the basic fitness features to help you to lose weight and hit those daily move goals. Both the Inspire 2 and 3 will track your heart rate, active zone minutes, this is the time spent in each heart rate zone. There's connected GPS, so you can track your walks, runs, and rides as long as you have your phone with you. So if you're like me, and you do want to save yourself some money, then built-in GPS isn't a must-have. So as long as you have your phone with you, the Inspire 2 and 3 will have you covered. There's a cardio fitness score, daily readiness score, multiple exercise modes to track your basic activities like running, cycling, and weightlifting. It's water resistant up to 50 meters and still tracks your heart rate, sleep, steps, and calories burned. So at this price point, you have everything you need to help you on your fitness or weight loss journey. Now the latest Inspire 3 over the free will also come with SpO2 blood tracking, high and low heart rate notifications, find my phone, an always on mode, and more importantly, that color display. It's not super bright, but it's a vast improvement of the previous Inspire 2 display, which is black and white and was a real struggle to read in bright, sunny conditions. On a sad note, you only get a six month free trial of Fitbit Premium on the new Inspire 2, but still available on the Inspire 2, you will still get a full year of Fitbit Premium. Fitbit Premium alone costs $9.99 a month, so that's a big saving. Thinking about it, I might as well just buy a Fitbit Inspire 2 and get Fitbit Premium included for the year to save myself some money. Let me know in the comments below that if you have tried that. Now next, just over the 100 mark, is the Fitbit Lux and the Charge 5. Both devices share the same base features, then the Charge 5 comes with a few extra features over the Lux, which you would expect for that extra money. The only feature the Lux does have over the Charge 5 is relaxed breathing sessions. The Charge 5 in the UK retails for $129.99, and the Lux is $109.99. In the US, the Charge 5 retails for $149.95, and 129.95 for the looks. Remember, all the prices that do mention are the official retail prices, so I'll leave a link below so you can check out the latest prices and offers. Now, even at this price point, you still get a stainless steel case on the looks and Charge 5 for a more premium feel, and you still get all the features I've already mentioned from the Inspire 3. So heart rate, sleep, steps, and calorie tracking is all here. Personally, I like the chunky design of the Charge 5 compared to the thin, elegant design of the Lux. Let me know in the comments below, do you prefer the Charge 5 or the look of the Lux? The Lux is designed with more of a fashion focus in mind. Even the special edition looks like a piece of jewelry. The special edition is a lot more money, so if you do decide to go with that one, just remember you won't be getting any extra features for the price. So it still have less features than the Charge 5. Now battery life is still good, considering you now have a bright colored touchscreen. You have a five day battery life on the Lux and a seven day battery life on the Charge 5. Then over the Lux, the Charge 5 also comes with built-in GPS. There's an ECG app for heart rhythm assessment, high and low heart rate notifications, an EDA scan app for stress management, and Fitbit Pay. Now I have no idea what Google and Fitbit were thinking with the Versa 4, as now the Versa 4 has lost out on the Google Assistant and now Google own Fitbit. I thought we'd be getting a lot more features now Google own Fitbit, but it's not the case and it's the same with the Sense 2. More on that in a minute. The Versa 4 retails for $229.95 in the US and $199.99 in the UK. On paper, the 3 and the 4 are virtually the same device. Apart from the Versa 4 having improved software, a new physical button that's now in a more convenient position and that you've now lost out on Google Assistant. Both devices, active zone minutes, built-in GPS, cardio fitness score, daily readiness score, automatic exercise tracking, 40 plus exercise modes, it's water resistant up to 50 meters, you can track your floors climbed, there's SpO2, blood oxygen tracking, irregular heart rhythm notifications, blood glucose tracking, multiple sleep and stress features, fast charging, Alexa, a colored display, a six month membership of Fitbit Premium, and a six day battery life. 
on risk calls are available on the Versa 3, they're just not available at launch on the Versa 4 as they will be coming soon along with a few extra features, which include Google Maps and Google Wallet. Now the extra money you're paying for here over the Charge 5 is for that smartwatch experience as you can now make calls and respond to texts on your wrist instead of just receiving notifications. Following on from the Versa 4 is the Fitbit Sense 2. Like the Versa 4, the Sense 2 has lost and gained the same features. And surprisingly, it no longer comes with a stainless steel case, which is a shame as it did give it a more premium feel over the Versa 4. Now they look almost identical. The Sense 2 retails for $299.95 in the US and $269.99 in the UK. This time around, you'll only be able to tell them apart from the color options available. The main reason to get the Sense 2 over the Versa 4 is for those extra sensors that do focus more on your health. There's an ECG app for heart rhythm assessment, a skin temperature sensor, all day body response tracking with notifications and an EDA scanner for stress management. And just remember, if you do want a more detailed breakdown of all the devices I do mention, then check out my playlist up there as this will have you covered. Lastly is the watch I now own, the new Google Pixel Watch. I sent my Fitbit Sense 2 back for this, and let me tell you now, that was a big mistake. Now for the price, and it being Google's flagship model, I thought the Pixel Watch would come with all the features of the Fitbit Sense 2 and more, but it's just not the case. More on that in a minute. The Google Pixel Watch retails for $349.99 in the US and $339 in the UK for the Wi-Fi version. Then you will be paying slightly more if you want the LTE option. The main reason I I ordered the Pixel Watch was for that clean modern look and that really bright colored display that is customizable just like an Apple Watch. It's a nice looking smartwatch. On the wrist, the Pixel Watch does feel a little small, even though it's around the same size as the Fitbit Sense 2. I just wished it was a little bit bigger, but then if it was, I suspect the battery life would be even worse than it is now. I can't even get a full day's battery life out of it, and it only has to track me working out up to one hour a day. So it's not like I'm pushing it through its paces. You don't even get the fast charging that comes with the Sense 2, which after just a 12 minute charge, you'll get a full day's battery life, and the Sense 2 still lasts up to six days. What's going on Google. I thought the new Pixel Watch was going to be the ultimate Fitbit, but that's not the case as it's still the Sense 2. At least for fitness, you still get all the basic fitness features that you will need. So again, heart rate, sleep, steps, and calorie tracking is here. And you'll still be using this with the Fitbit app, even though it comes with its own app just for setting it up. Now again, what's strange with the new Pixel Watch compared to the Sense 2 is that the Google Watch at least comes with Google Assistant included. Unlike the Sense 2, it does lose out on Alexa. And you won't be getting those extra health sensors that come with a Sense 2. So which one should you buy? If you're on a budget and you can stretch to the Charge 5, then go with that one. As when you start upgrading to the Versa 4 and onwards, you won't be getting too many extra features. Plus you still get a stainless steel case and a colored display. So hopefully Fitbit don't remove that in the future. Otherwise, if you just have to a fitness tracker to track all your basics, then go with the new Inspire 3, as its battery life outperforms all the rest. You only need the extra sensors of the Sense 2 if you want to keep an overall track of your heart's health, as it may flag something up and then you'll be able to pass all that data onto your doctor. Now as for the Pixel Watch, it's still a great looking device and it does what it needs to do. It just doesn't focus on fitness as well as it should. I'd wait for next year's model to see what Google do bring out. Now if you are wondering, is Fitbit Premium worth it over the free version, then check out my next video as I'll have you covered.